I'm ready or at any time I could put the CUSA board on the transom but I don't want to because I'll have to climb over it every time I get in and out the boat and I have an awful lot of stuff to do that's totally unrelated to the transom and I'd like to do it first however I want to use the CUSA board to build the door for the um, console and it's coming out the same piece I'm cutting the transom out of so I think I will uh, cut the CUSA board to fit the transom, put it away, and use the scraps to go ahead and build the door for the um, console. So earlier today, I removed all the fiberglass from the interior of the transom. There wasn't a whole lot left. Cut these little stringers back, and now I'm going to remove the wood, and I will make a template and cut the CUSA board to fit. So whoever is in charge of promotion for CUSA board should get a raise because it seems like, according to the internet, it is the only product to use for transoms and other things on boats. It's a man-made product. It's a foam. It's reinforced with a lot of glass fibers. It's really strong. It doesn't rot. doesn't absorb water. Um, it's very expensive. Um, I read a lot of literature on it, and I drank Kool-Aid. I bought a piece of CUSA for the transom. Uh, it's one and three eighths inches thick. It's a four by eight sheet. With tax, it was just over four hundred bucks, which is uh, a lot for me. Um, but that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going with Kusa. And if they have a competitor out there, their um, advertising people need to be fired because you never hear of anything other than Kusa, Kusa, Kusa. Okay, all the plywood is gone. Wasn't too bad. It stuck pretty good around the edges, but the middle came off easily. And the glass underneath it looks pretty decent. I'll have to do some grinding, but not a ridiculous amount. And we'll make a template and we'll cut the CUSA board. But I won't put it on because I don't want to be stepping over it for the next two or three weeks. Transom in a can. I made a template for the transom out of some little skinny plywood and a hot glue gun. And if I can get the template out in one piece, that means I can get the transom in, the CUSA board in, in one piece. But I have that partial cap over it, so I'm not really sure if it's going to come out or not. But it, hopefully it will. If not, I'll have to cut the cap. I think it'll come out. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll have to cut the rest of those little stringers out, and there's not much left of them anyway. They need to be replaced. I'm hoping after I cut the transom, I'll have enough CUSA board left to do these four stringers in the back because they take quite a load, and also to make a frame for the door for the console. So that's uh, why I'm pushing to cut the CUSA board transom, is so I can see how much scrap I have left. So I marked out my CUSA board. And I'm getting ready to cut it, and I don't know, I guess I use a jigsaw because the sides have a little curve to them. I'm really a skill saw man, but I'll try it with a jigsaw. And it looks like I'm going to have enough drop to do the stringers against the transom and to do the frame for the door and for the console. It turns out Kusa cuts really easily. Um, Kusa grinds really easily. Um, Kusa is not quite as heavy as uh, equivalent thickness of plywood, but Kusa is very itchy. It has a lot of glass in it and glass gets everywhere. So it's a little bit um, uncomfortable to work with. But other than that, so far, um, I still have the Kool-Aid down, haven't thrown it up yet. Well, I didn't film it, but this is like the sixth time I've put this in and out of the boat, or in the boat. Um, just keep filing away and grinding, and I got a pretty good fit right now, so I think I'm happy with it. Uh, originally, I know I said I wasn't going to put this in, 
because I'm going to have to climb over it. But I keep getting too blocked. I keep getting some wet glue here and some wet paint there and I'm not able to do anything. So, so putting in the transom just opens up all kind of work so I'll never have to wait on anything again. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep working on getting this transom glued in. So the first thing I did was run an all thread rod through where the um, drain hole is going to be and put a little block of wood and wedged it against the two remaining parts of the rear stringers. So I got it in place and I got the bottom tight. There's a big gap at the top and it's like I don't have it against the wall but it's touching there and it's touching here. And all the way around, it's touching on the bottom edges, so this thing's just kind of bent out. Just have to, uh, I think I have a good fit. Just have to put lots of epoxy and clamp it well. I'm going to work on a clamping system right now. I've got a, uh, an all thread rod through the drain hole, and I'm going to drill two more holes through the CUSA board. These are the old scupper holes, and chances are the new scupper holes will be in the same place, but if they aren't, I just have some little half inch holes to to patch in the CUSA and that's all the holes I'm gonna I hope to drill for the clamping operation. My youngest son Dave is home for a visit so I took the opportunity to use his um, youth and help and have another set of hands and he is troweling on thickened epoxy using a notch to trowel. Got a good coverage everywhere. So we're all clamped up and we have squeeze out snakes pretty much everywhere super look at that snake 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 there's lots of ways to brace off a transom i've seen people use a million screws that's what we did in a houseboat or uh different things but this worked for me i drilled uh two holes and it's where the old scupper holes were so hopefully I can just leave them, but if not, I just have to patch the hole in the CUSA board. Bolted, this is like an old concrete form. This would be the whaler. These would be the strong backs, or some people call them purlins or whatever. And if I were to use a heavier, like a double 2x6, two like two 2x6s two with the bolt in the middle, it wouldn't have bent. But this 2x4 is kind of light and kind of long and limber, so as we tighten it up, we just use the wedges to take out the slack. And it worked out good. We got squeeze out all around the whole thing so pretty cool tomorrow we'll take all this wood off and uh, see what it looks like the setup on the interior of the boat is the same as the outside of the boat um, the horizontal whaler with the all threads bolted through it is the base it gives you something to um, push against and there's a matching vertical purling or just a two by four that matches up with everyone on the outside of the hull and um, work really good, as simple as it can be. hard to say that I look forward to grinding, but I really kind of look forward to this. This is the last of the obnoxious grinding, other than a little bit at the cap rail, and I can do that standing up. 
So I cut these, um, the rest of these stringers out. I had kind of toyed with the idea of keeping one side of them, but no, they had to go. They were, there just wasn't enough left to make it worthwhile to keep anything. And the wood's still full of water. Amazing, it hasn't rained that much lately. And the little bugs that my boat was infested with, there's still a few of them trying to hide in this wood, so now they got nowhere to go. There's no wood for them to uh, live off the bacteria. There's no, no place for them, they gotta go away. I try to remove as much as I can with the uh, diamond wheel on the grinder, because it's so much faster and less dusty than using the uh, abrasive flap wheels. And the diamond wheel lasts apparently forever. I haven't worn one out yet. And the little abrasive wheels, they go bad pretty quick. You know, five bucks a piece or something like that. So I cut all the fins as low as I dared without cutting through the bottom of the boat. And then I put the flap disc on the grinder and I grinded for a long time. So yesterday I did some serious grinding um, on all this back part. And the middle two stringers the big stringers conflict with the bolt holes for the um, motor bracket so i'm gonna have to move it so i ground off those two um, flanges and then i just had the one flange for the other one so i just ground them off also so i'm gonna start fresh so did a lot of epoxy this morning they put a big fillet so we could get some good strong curves use a uh, plastic Empty plastic caulk tube works works really well for getting this curve. And let it dry, and I guess tomorrow I'll do a lot of sanding again. It won't be as a nasty because it won't be fiberglass. It'll just be dust. And then I'm going to start fiberglassing the transom at least high enough so I can put the stringers in so I can put my deck down. That's my goal. I don't want to go all the way to the top because I don't know what I'm going to do at the top. I'll probably I want to put like seven layers on it so I'll probably put a layer a layer a layer a layer a layer a layer and get at least five where the stringer is going to go and then put in the stringer and then maybe put in a couple more I want this to be like really really strong because we're going to hang a 250 horsepower motor probably on a bracket can't leave it out 30 inches so it really needs to be beefed up so I glued up a new um, little transom template just with some strips of plywood and a hot glue gun. I'm starting to cut the glass to lay it on the transom. And this is going to be kind of challenging for me because it's just me. But I think what I'm going to do is put a layer of chop mat and two layers of woven and then take a time out, let it cure. Let me address any of my flaws because the flaws tend to... Um, get worse the more layers you put on there so my first goal is one chop two woven and the wovens are going to come further and further down the transom so that when i finish the top of the transom i can overlap all these different areas so this is the biggest piece they'll be um the chopped will be maybe three inches less i mean the woven will be maybe three inches less and then three inches less and then three inches less my goal will be to have about six inches where the stringers tie in and then I'll feel safe tying in the stringers and then we'll do the rest after the stringers are tied in I can finish my floor finally just marked out my third piece of glass uh, of woven roven would be the fourth piece of glass and each one I'm coming down four more inches from the top so this one is 12 inches from the top I'll cut it and roll it up and it's a rainy day so nothing's going to happen outside well i wasn't really planning on glassing today because it was a chance of rain but the chance of rain is gone and it's cool cool weather helps me with this time constraint deal to make sure none of this stuff kicks off before i get too far along so i'm ready i've got my first four layers of glass i got boo coops uh resin i hope Got a hardener, gloves, a roller. Wish me luck. Here I'm setting the first layer of woven roven over the um, chop mat. And it's, it's not hard, but it's a little tricky. I want it to get it straight. If you just kind of touch it up against the sticky 
uh, woven robin because the resin's still not cured. It'll stay. Most of the time, sometimes it falls off. If you push it down hard, it's not going to fall off. But if you need to move it, you're going to probably pull off the um, wool, the chop mat. So it's kind of tricky and the nice cool weather. I didn't feel rushed, which was nice. And you just got to keep moving the stuff around and getting it where you want it. And once you get it where you want it, you can take your hand, if you have a glove that's not too sticky, and just kind of spread it around and everything's lovely and you put resin and roll it and resin and roll it and resin and roll it. I'm still using my little uh, weenie roller. I like the little roller. It's uh, It doesn't hold a lot of resin but with the cup nearby it's not hard to keep dipping and rolling and it's very hard so it kind of um, almost substitutes as a fin roller. I know it's probably not as good but uh, when you're working by yourself it's hard to keep swapping back and forth and keeping the fin roller clean. So um, I use this little roller, I push the fabric down really hard with it, and I think I'm getting pretty darn good results. So once again, the projects that I'm most anxious about Go smooth like crazy. Um, had no problems whatsoever. Plenty of materials. The glass rolled out nice and even. Just uh, just went great. I even put a couple of extra um, pieces of glass in each corner. Some extra tabbing. So tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. A layer of chop mat and three woven rovens down toward the bottom. The overlap's probably going to be much smaller. Well, that'll give me seven layers of cloth, and I will butt the little stringers into that and glass them in. So I did the top four layers, or the bottom four layers, the first four layers, and uh, went really well, and then I went and ran some errands and did a few things, came back, it was dry, and the weatherman was saying no more rain, and it's cool, so I did the next four layers. So today I did eight layers, and uh, man, it just came out so good. I'm proud of myself. So I sanded down my Sharpies this morning, and I think we can call it good for this uh, video. The transom is installed, and the interior is the bottom half is glass. We'll we'll put a lot more up top when I do the top cap, whatever we end up doing up there.